Well, we're going to talk about somebody with very, very outstanding, amazing, unusual career and background. This man was born Cabell Callaway, 1907, in Rochester, New York, to parents who were both college educated. Mom actually graduated from Morgan State University down in Maryland. Father graduated from uh, Lincoln University of Pennsylvania. Uh, Dad was a lawyer, real estate man. Mom was a teacher. In 1907, that is highly unusual. So you could say that little Cabell Jr. was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Not many black folks were born with that kind of background. Not even Miles Davis could support all of that. Or maybe close. Bottom line is, uh, Cal grew up like all other kids that had uh, well-to-do families who were educated. He had to get a good education. Uh, wound up in Pittsburgh and eventually uh, he moved to uh, D.C. to attend the great Howard University. You all should know Howard University right now because that is where Kamala Harris graduated from as well, uh, except Cab did not graduate. You see, he stayed there long enough to start entering a talent contest, and once he won one, that was it. He thought, shoot, I don't need a college education. I need to go to New York, baby, and find my career, and go to New York and find his career he did. He wound up performing at the famed Cotton Club in Harlem, New York. Oh, yes, he did. And he was the performer of the evening, always. You see, because he was not just a singer. He was an actor. Oh, yeah. He was a dancer. Oh, yeah. He was a band leader later. Because eventually he had to put together his own band. He was a multi-talented individual, probably because of the rich educational background he grew up in as a kid. And all the luxuries they could afford in terms of dance lessons and music lessons and acting lessons and all of the various activities he had the ability to attend and uh, learn from, and perhaps the personalities that visited his home from time to time. At any rate, when Cab got really, really big and the Cotton Club was about to go a little bit uh, sour on him, he decided to start his own big band in the uh, early 30s. And he ran this big band from the 30s right into the 40s. And what a big band it was. I'm telling you, Dizzy Gillespie in the trumpet section and uh, Jonah Jones in the trumpet section and Doc Cheatham. Yeah is in the uh, trumpet section. Matter of fact, Doc has a grandson, Tio, who one day might be coming to the Clearwater Jazz Holiday because he's a great trumpet player in his own right today. Born right here in Florida. That's right, he's a bad boy. Be waiting for him, okay? Anyway, so Doc was in that trumpet section. Uh, Doc's a great legend out of uh, New Orleans. Uh, also, you had Ben Webster and Chew Berry in the uh, 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 sax section, and uh, you had the great Milt Hinton, the judge, on the bass. Oh yeah, we talk about a super band, and they were loyal because Cab had a whole lot of fun. He had a big hit, so he was making plenty of money so he could play his guy's P of money. Hidey, 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 ho. Oh yeah, from his song, Mini and Moochie. And most people go, man, that's kind of a crazy, lighthearted, you know, it's not really serious. Well, people like to laugh too. People like to dance, people like to have fun. And of course, Cab had a little bit of vaudeville in his background. So he could combine singing with dancing, with acting, with a joke or two. You may say he was a prototype for people like Sammy Davis, Jr., who came up later. All right, so this is a major man. He is the first black artist to have a million-selling record, one tune, not a LP, no, no, 
one tune. Many the moochie, man. Million. A million. That's how popular he was. And he continued to break recording records and he had a career that spanned 65 years. He did not stop performing until 1994, right up to his death. All kinds of awards, Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, noted uh, in the Smithsonian for his recording achievements, uh, Big Band uh, Hall of Fame, just on and on and on. This guy was still winning Grammys as late as 2008, long after he'd gone. So you see, he is one of those performers who is timeless. His great contribution is he took scatting that was developed by Louis Armstrong and took it to a whole new level with all kinds of energy and speed and a little humor and really fast enunciation that probably helped pave the road for this crop of rappers we have today. So you can hardly look at any aspect of popular entertainment and not find Cap Calloway. Did I say entertainment? Did I say acting? Oh, yes, I did. Well, let's see. Porgy and Bess, he was there in that movie. Stormy Monday, he was there. Hello, Dolly, he was there in a very popular TV classic, movie classic, The Blues Brothers. Old Cap was still there and stole the show. So we're talking about a major personality who we all need to spend more time getting to know because he is one of those heroes whose contributions are not fully appreciated by those of us who are walking around today. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cabell Cal Calloway, born 1907, died 1994 and had a career that spanned over 65 years. Dancer, actor, singer, comic, band leader, and innovative personality, creative genius in the legacy of jazz and big band history. Thank you very much.